And today, one more podcast from the Besheriff Lodge on the Igigik River. There's going to be an amazing YouTube video coming with Scott Haugen talking techniques, a bunch of good stuff out there. But one interesting side of this, besides all the fishing, the great food, the cozy, fun times, and the card playing at night, there was another thing that I noticed about this lodge. It's incredibly remote. It's out here in the middle of the Alaskan bush. And two men by the name of Mark Corpy and George Joy decided to buy a lodge. Now, Mark, thank you for being on the Salmon Trout Steelheader podcast. First of all, can you tell us what the lodge was like before you guys came on board and when you bought it? Well, the first time I came to the lodge was probably about four years ago, owned by Bruce Hollingstad. Mm -hmm. And I paid for myself and three of my daughters to come as clients. And the fishing was absolutely amazing. Um, We all loved it. My daughters loved it. And then about... A year later, Bruce decided to sell. George Joy was kind of the one of his head guys keeping everything going here for him. So he approached George to buy it. George um, then asked me if I would... I've known George for 30 years, and he asked me if I would want to go in with it, on on it with him. Mm-hmm. And he... Uh, so, yeah, I asked my daughters if they would want to do it because I'm busy building houses in Astoria, Oregon, and I yeah. probably wouldn't have done it if the family wasn't involved. But my daughters loved it so much, and they all said, yeah, let's yeah. do it. So we went in with George, bought it, yeah. and then... Proceeded to build some buildings here because it was originally most of the clients stayed in tents. Yeah. And being a builder, I sent a full contar- cargo container full of um, lumber, windows, door, everything that it takes to build buildings mm-hmm. up from Seattle. And it got delivered to Igigik, mm-hmm. which is about 26 miles down the river. And how big is the town of Igigik? Well, I think now there are maybe 30 people. Mm-hmm. Are, are in Igigik. It's so very easy. remote where we're at. Yeah, yeah, you can't drive. You can fly in only or boat into Igigik. But once you got it up there, though, that's just to the town of Igigik. Right. Now you've got 20 more miles up this river, I would assume. Yeah, 25 miles up river. So we had three skiffs going, 20-foot boats for six days, hauling the stuff up river, unloading on the shore. Two of my daughters loaded them on the trailer, put them behind a side-by-side, pulled it all the way up top, unloaded it while we were building the buildings. Wow. And um, we got one of them done in May, and then um, uh, two years ago, and then the other one we came back in September and did the other one in September. So we got two new buildings. We added uh, two two full bathrooms. So we got you know four showers and plenty of plenty of bathrooms, toilets, and that stuff. Hot water for the guests. Yeah, you know it's the type of thing where. Um, you're coming here. It's a very remote area. You're experiencing Alaska truly. Um, at the same time, even though you know it's uh, you know it's not one of those crazy expensive lodges out there where they you know are going to give you tea and let you fish for two hours and then you go back in and go on your Wi-Fi. This is actually experiencing true wild Alaska. Yet it's cozy and the food is phenomenal. But before we get there. How about that boat ride up? I heard it wasn't necessarily just a smooth sailing from Igigik up here. Yeah, no, you got to watch. You got to watch the wind. There's two big lagoons below us that are like lakes. So if the mm-hmm. wind kicks up at all, they're shallow and there's sandbars in them. And you just, if it's real windy, you just got to wait below. So some of the time the guys hauling lumber up would um, have to tent on the side of the river overnight till the wind would get die down so they could get through the lagoons. Um and then this also happens every spring. All our fuel, the food, everything we ship up. I think this year we had 13 boatloads of stuff that had to get brought up from 25 miles down river. So, again, you're watching the weather when you bring them up. Usually it's in the spring. Mm-hmm. And, um, Huge undertaking to do this. What what gives you the the drive to do something this difficult? This is not your normal situation where you got roads leading to it and a hardware store down the road. Yeah, the the... Now, I mean, I love fishing. My daughters love fishing, and we try to get a little bit in before clients come. And mm-hmm. but it is very enjoyable watching people catch fish. You get adults that grown men, grown women that act like kids when they've caught 10, 11 fish in the 10, 11 casts. Yes, you know, and it's not always like that, but it's like that a lot. Well, know? for me, the slow days out here is like, oh man, between the four of us, we only got 10. Yeah, and uh. And, if, you know, it's been really interesting to see being one of the, you know, most productive coho rivers on the world. But there is still subtleties to it and times when the bite changes and they move around and stuff. So it's a, it's a lot of fun, but the opportunity is incredible. So now uh, your girls, as you mentioned, do a phenomenal job guiding, 
cleaning fish, all that, are they just naturally good at it, or you uh, teach them from a young age, or what happened? Yeah, no, they're they're all really hard workers, and they mm-hmm. do construction cleaning and wood construction work for me. But they um, they really like doing this, so they've taken on. You know, had we've had our guides teach them how to fillet fish, and some days they're filleting ninety fish, and they love it. You know, and they, they do a great job. Do I a saw great those job, fillets. And they're up here vacuum packing it and getting it in the freezers and. Yeah, so they enjoy it. And the quality of these coho is insane. They all cut fire truck red. They're beautiful. We get to eat them here, Um, you know, smoke fish at at, at night for dinner and all this, you know, deep fried seafood (laughs) and everything. Uh, I, you know, there was a guy here who was a rather, rather uh, larger fellow. (laughs) And uh, he was talking about the food. He's like, and he points at me, you know, me being, you know, 100 and. 60, 75 pounds or whatever. And he says, I used to be your size when I got here. <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty sure I put on a, a few tires around my midsection as well. And it's so worth it. Um, so all those logistics, all that stuff, what do you have planned for the future here at the lodge? Um, yeah, there's a, uh, I don't know that we'd be doing any more buildings. We can mm-hmm. pretty much sleep the amount of people we'd like to have here at one time now in yep. wood structures. Yep. Um, Maybe upgrade the boat motors a little bit or something like that, the boats mm-hmm. if we need to. Um, always, of course, new fishing gear. Mm-hmm. Every year we bring new fishing gear up. But, um, yeah, there's not a whole lot. I mean, it, it is a rustic camp. We don't mm-hmm. have heat in all the rooms. or <clears throat> Some of the two big buildings have little heaters in them, but mm-hmm. we've got a lot of bedding to keep you warm. Or oh, yeah. If you're really cold-blooded, we do got buddy heaters we can get you, let you use in your room. Mm-hmm. Um, we got batteries for people with CPAC machines, so you know they can live like they're at home. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So as far as upgrading, I mean, there's always little things I probably can't think of right now. Mm-hmm. But um, well, yeah. I mean, just one of the things I notice is around here, um, you've got you know people like George, and I'm sure you too. Uh, but George, being a mechanic, um, it's not a case of just oh, this one stopped working. Let's go get another one. It's, you got to bring the parts up here, and you work on it as you will. Right. Right, yeah. yeah, we got extra water pumps, extra water heaters, extra, um, all kinds of extra stuff. So if one goes down, you're not... Yeah, so you got to have a backup plan for everything, everything. when you're out here. Yeah. yeah. Now, Alaska itself, have you been coming up here for a long time, or what What about Alaska? Well, the first time I came up was probably about eight or nine years ago, actually commercial fish mm-hmm. down in uh, Bristol Bay, just because I wanted to do it. My wife's yep. family always, always did it. Yeah, the Johnsons, yeah. sockeye fishing. Yeah, Yeah, and then I came up five years ago and did a moose hunt and got a nice moose, and, and then um, the next year came up fishing with my girls, and, mm-hmm. and then we've been doing this now. Came up this year and got a nice coastal brown bear so yeah I, I love alaska but most of my time in alaska has been spent around here for sure so the wildlife here i've enjoyed we got a, a fox that comes around and says hi and it's beautiful we got to see a bear um all sorts of that got to take a nap in the tundra it's yeah. incredible yeah. so you work um hard doing construction all year um when you come up here you're still working a ton yeah, but yeah. how does it how does it feel? Do you feel like you get to unwind at all, or are you just always going? No, I I mean it's it's different than the work you do, so it almost doesn't feel like work. And the people you got all the clients are so nice, so you're you know you get to visit with a lot of different people, and mm-hmm. even though you might be working 15, 17 hours a day, it doesn't feel like work. Yeah, and um, yeah, no, the, and wolves. We've seen a lot of wolves this year. We saw a couple of caribou the other day. Wow. So a lot of new, a lot of ptarmigan, beautiful birds. So yeah, there's a lot of and close to the world famous Brooks Falls. Yeah, where we do flyouts. We had nine people fly out there the other day, and I think they mm-hmm. saw 15, 18 bears there. Bears catching fish, and incredible. Yeah, so one guy he he said that was his bucket list, and he just couldn't thank me enough to be able to get him to Brooks. Wow, <laughs> yeah. that's great. Fishing and, and then Brooks. Yep, yeah. and then uh, the actual lake above Igigik River. Um, it's a big one. How yeah. big? Yeah, it's the uh, second largest lake in Alaska. Mm-hmm. And the 14th largest in the world. It's wow. 60 miles across. It's crystal clear water. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess it's 600 feet deep. Uh, it's got some gas rocks, so it doesn't necessarily freeze over in the winter, even though it's cold, windy, yeah. negative weather. It, um, it'll, maybe a third of it will freeze. Interesting. Yeah. Well, what an incredible part of the world. Um, I'm taking off today, but it's been an absolute pleasure being here at the Sheriff Lodge. Uh, if you guys get a chance to check them out, um, online, what's the website address? 
We'll have to <laughs> we'll have to drop that in. <laughs> Search, Bas search Basheriff Lodge. You'll find it <laughs> yeah. there. And Basheriff then, Fishing. Basheriff Fishing. You know Scott Haugen fishing in Alaska. Whatever you want to do, you'll find you'll find it. Plus, in the magazine, we got the ad. We got some information online. You should read the article that Scott Haugen wrote about it with some pictures. Plus, this video coming up, you'll be able to see some of the fun that we have up here. But uh, Mark, uh, what's the best way for people to get in in contact to book for next year? Because this this it, next year is going to fill up super quick. Yeah, we've got a lot of already returning clients that have booked for yeah. for next year that were here this year. So. Yeah. Um, and the guys here that I've been talking to, every single one of them wants to come back. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. Probably the best would be my phone number, which mm -hmm. is five zero three two nine eight nine six eight six and that's actually my construction phone but it's the one I carry with me all the time. Okay, repeat um, that one more time. Five oh three two nine eight nine six eight six and again it's Mark Corby. Yep. And if uh, if you do contact him from this, you know, mention the Salmon Trout Steelheader podcast and I am already jealous of whoever you are that's gonna be booking up there because I'm leaving today and I'm already thinking about next year. Hopefully I can come back. So thanks again, Mark. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you, Lucas. Pleasure right. having you here, too. For sure. I'll bring the guitar next time yes, as well. You so. better. You'll be kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Yeah, bye.